If there's anything that's worth repeating over and over, it's the importance of responsible firearm ownership and using due diligence in protecting from theft and unauthorized access, especially if there are children in the home. Hi, this is Steve, Critical Dreamer Channel. Thanks for being here. This is the PS96BE made by Gardall, and it's a new safe on the 2017 market. Now, I've made it clear in previous videos that I'm not a fan of electronic safes. You can go to the other videos and get a deeper explanation. But in short, you know, there's a reason why mechanical safes, just like firearms, have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's because it's a proven system. One other thing to consider. I always find it amazing that you know how many people are against smart guns and smart gun technology. And because of the reasons that they can either be hacked or they fail... Yet people are quick to run out and buy an electronic safe to put stuff in. Now, I understand the importance of uh, speediness, being able to access something quickly. That's fine. But in almost 30 years of security, I've always found it interesting that that's how it works. But that's fine. I tell people, buy what you like. Buy what's most important to you. But for somebody who absolutely must have something electronic, I think this is worth a look. Now, before we get into depth, get in depth on this, let's take a look at what preceded this unit. What came before this was the Gardall PS915BE. This is no longer shown on Gardall's website. I'm sort of happy about that. This unit is bulky. Uh, there's no way to turn off the button tones. Yes, this does come from, from the factory with button tones. I have softened these up and quieted them down because they were just annoying from the factory. The programming on this is odd and awkward. The locking mechanism, in my opinion, is weak and not protected as well as it could be. Now, this, in my opinion, is not a safe. And I've said this before in earlier vid videos. Be very attentive to the difference between a safe and a lockable box. I'm sure this unit is still available. Some distributors and retail outlets probably still have them in stock. But again, they're no longer listed on Gardall's website. Now, what would I use this for? I think this makes a good EDC dump box. Let me open it up for you here. It does hold a lot. This would be great for storing all your, quote, non-firearm gear for daily or nightly storage. If you carry OC spray, a small flashlight, even a medical kit, this is fine for keeping unauthorized persons from having access to your stuff. As far as keeping children safe in the home, I definitely would rather see this be used than nothing at all. At least this is some sort of protection. Now, there's a reason why this has gone bye-bye and been what I would call a replacement for it. it would be this one. Now, this PS96BE, to start off with, is not weatherproof, nor is it fire-rated. But it's at least a pleasant and welcome substitute for the one I just showed, showed you in Gardall's pistol box line, their safe line. For specs, the outside, 12 and an eighth inches wide, 10 and three quarter inches deep, three and five sixteenths inches high. This weighs 16 pounds. It, it's basically a nice little suitcase. It's a, it's a heavyweight suitcase with a handle. The outside on either side has these plastic end caps and they do a good job of acting as skids almost because they're applied on each side and it keeps that bottom metal roughness from scratching things when you put down put it down so the, the plastic end caps do work good for that uh, as far as this handle it's pretty rugged and solid as you can see it really has no flex at all to it so it feels like it's going to hold up very well now to access this there are two ways to do it there's a mechanical key cylinder comes with two keys these are the standard barrel type key seven pin and you pop off this cover and that gives you access to open the lid okay the other way is the keypad this keypad is backlit it's going to be hard to see in the video because it's not a very bright light but it is backlit and there is no tone. I like silent keypads, don't you? A lot of people really do. Now the combination on this can be set from anywhere from between four to six digits of your choice. You can use the same 
button more than once in the combination you choose. Now to open this, you must first wake the unit up. This is set to one, two, three, four. First, you press any key of the four to illuminate the keypad, then begin your code sequence. At that point, the blue light will flash twice and open. It's just an indication quickly to let you know that you, you did a good job getting in. So press once and then one, two, three, four, and it opens up pretty quickly, pretty nicely. And inside, let's get this back on, it's the two anchoring bolts and then the instruction sheet, owner's manual. Let's put that aside. Okay. We're going to go through a couple of things here. Code errors. If an incorrect code is entered, it'll flash red four times. Again, it won't show up too well here because it's a very light illumination, but it is there. And if the code is entered incorrectly three times, the safe will go into lockout mode for 15 seconds. In addition to that, if an incorrect code is entered after the three incorrect tries, the safe will lock out for five minutes. I tried over and over. I could not at all get this unit to lock out for five minutes. The reason is that once it goes into the red flashing lockout mode for 15 seconds, it's just not possible to enter the code correctly or incorrectly at that point. I was only able to get this to lock out for the 15 second interval, but at least it did that successfully every time. Now, the manual key will, if you happen to end up in uh, lockout mode, the manual key will bypass the electronic portion of this safe at any time. So it's not like you're going to be locked out completely. You just need to have that key nearby in case that happens. The thing that's tricky about this keypad is if you're not focused, if you're not paying attention and you forget to wake the unit up with that first key press before your code, you're going to find that you might lose some valuable time in an urgent situation. So you have to remember to press first and then do your code. And I found what happened is, you know, I forget and go one, two, three, four. And well, it won't open. So let's try it again. No, no, because now it's starting to realize that something's wrong. It's flashing red. Ultimately, the best thing to do is practice. Just like you should be practicing with this stuff if you're expecting to need to get into it quickly at some point. Or if you end up in a situation like that, just stop, wait for it to clear, the light will go out, start over. One, and then one, two, three, four. And then it'll be fine. The interior. Inside, nine and a half inches wide, six and a half inches deep, two and five inches high, five eighths inches, excuse me, high on the inside. The lid is a gas spring assist, which is nice. It does help assist the, the door and the lid to... Uh, open up speedily. This small compartment over here is interesting. That is just the pocket where the gas piston sits when the door is closed. But you could put something in there. Um, it's 13 16 inches wide, six and three quarters inches long, and about an inch and a half deep. Now the two mounting screws in there that have to do with fixing the bottom plate. And there's also nuts tied to those, uh, screwed down to those screws, those machine screws. So you'll lose some space depending on what you're going to put in there if you're going to store something at all. But you have to be careful because when the door is closed, that piston is going to go in there and could possibly crush what you put in there. So you just need to be careful. But it is, you know, I was able to put about five highlighter markers in this portion here. So it is useful for something if you want to, if you want to try. There is no padding in this. It's just raw material. Now the main compartment is padded with a 7 16th inch thick rubber. The underside of the door over here is also padded, but it's thinner. It's 3 16 inch as well as the sides here are the thinner 3 16 So the bottom is the, the thickest part. There's a battery compartment in here. It comes out. There's the battery pack. It uses four double A's. And behind there, there's a reset button. That's how you program your code. Okay, let's put this in here. There are two mounting holes. You can see them in there. That's for... They give you these two wood screws that you can affix this box to, you know, something solid. And like I've always mentioned, if you're going to anchor this to a piece of furniture, be awful sure that piece of furniture is affixed to something. You don't want the safe and what it's bolted to to walk off in one piece, right? So the factory provides those two combination uh, Phillips slash head packs wood screws. 
for the purpose of securing it to something wood. You can also use machine screws and washers and nuts, of course, if you want to secure it in a way that uh, through bolts it down. Now the lid here of the door is 0 0.12 inches thick. There is an additional eighth inch thick plate on top of that. So it is made well, it's protected pretty well for, for what this unit is. And um, the locking mechanism is, is a clasp type mechanism. The only way, the best way I can describe it is, it works on the similar principle of like a car door, the way that latches and locks into itself when it's closed and sort of wraps around something. It's the same thing, basically. So if we, just for example, we can put a few things in here. That's a M&P Shield 9. You can put a couple mags in here. There's two eight rounds. Depending on how you want to fit them, you can go on top. It's not a ton of space in here, but there is plenty to put some stuff. There's a seven round mag. We can put that in somewhere. It'll fit. So just to give you an idea, you know, if it's in there, fine. Now, all in all, I think this is a a nice pistol box and being able to use it as a portable pistol safe is terrific it's not bulky but it provides enough weight and security to give peace of mind that your firearm isn't easily accessible to unauthorized persons now keep in mind that if it's going to be used as a portable unit don't forget about those two mounting holes on the bottom again this is not waterproof so water and other kinds of debris are able to enter into the compartment through those holes so be very careful also it's best to pack whatever you want to put in here, I think. If you're going to use this to transport things, uh, either wrap them in the fabric or put some foam in here just to crush it down a little bit. Because obviously, if you're going to be bringing this around places, things are going to be moving around loose in there because there aren't individual compartments or pull and pluck foam that you can set things in. It's just going to go in there. So put something in there to help it out, and I think that'll keep everything in a good position. You don't have to worry too much when, when you're moving this. Um, you know, coming from the factory, I think this does well. I, I, I spent some time just working with the combination just to break in that piston a little bit, the piston a little bit. I think what would be helpful upon receiving this for people is that, let's see, here we go into this lockout. I'm going to do it one more time. There we go. I think what would be helpful, uh, maybe a little ballastol on these pivot points, the far left here, and then on the far right, also the pivot point, the top of the piston, and maybe even the, the locking mechanism that's in this area over here. That would help break it in a little bit, make it easier to um, assist it in break, breaking in all the moving parts. I think an additional feature that would be nice on this is if it had some place to attach a cable, some sort of an eyelet welded to the body, whether the back or side, or something you can get a cable into it to use it to secure it in a vehicle or as a second method other than just using those screws or bolts. That's just a suggestion that maybe Gardal would consider putting on. I think that would add a, an extra level of versatility to this. Now the question is, when I look at this, is this a safe? Well, the solid construction of the body gets a yes from me, but the locking mechanism it gets an almost. I say that because although I think the locking mechanism is good, it could be a little bit better. But I think for what this is, it's a huge improvement from what came before it. And I think as far as the market goes for items in this category, this is a great little piece. Again, I'm not, not a, I'll say it over and over, I'm not a fan of electronic stuff. But I certainly would consider using something like this if I needed to. Um, beyond that, I think Gardall, in my opinion, did a really good job redeem, redeeming themselves by discontinuing that other unit and substituting it with this one and putting it in that vacancy. This is worth checking out. This is the Gardall PS96BE. Check it out if you can. I hope this information helps somebody. This is Steve, Critical Dreamer Channel. Be present, be mindful, and remember, it's all about the harmony.